I'm not going to spend too much time going over chapter 15, but I did want to uh, touch on it at least briefly because of the strategies that are uh, listed within the chapter. Uh, the chapter is all about describing in different ways um, to describe at different levels, whether you're focused in on something specific or if you're describing something in general. So it's really important to understand that the strategies mentioned in this chapter are not isolated to one type of writing. Um, for your expository essay, you will use them to help explain the concept or idea that you are writing about in your essay. Um, but you can use these strategies at any time. You use them in your narrative, you're going to use them in your expository, you're going to use them in every essay that you write this quarter. And think about your think about an argument. We're not going to really write a research argument in this class, but uh, hopefully you've written an argument in the past and you should hopefully remember and recall that you use most of the strategies listed here um, within an argument. So to me, arguments kind of encompass most of the different types of writing styles uh, compared to the to some of the others. But <clears throat> when it comes to detailing and describing, every time you write, you have to do that. It just depends on what your assignment is, what type of writing is, um, what type of writing it is. Um, as and that determines what kind of describing you're going to do. So as you read this chapter and work with the material in this chapter, do not think that this is just isolated to expository writing. Hopefully as you read this chapter, you realize, oh, well, this is stuff we covered for narrative. Why am I reading it in relation to expository writing? Well, it's because you need to describe in every type of writing, uh, especially expository, because you're simply exposing something. You're simply describing, haha, key word there, you're, you're simply describing something. So we're kind of working on it in isolation, but if you write an argument, an analysis, pretty much any type of writing, you've got to describe. You've got to describe your, your research, your sources, your support. Um, but again, there are different levels um, of doing that. So that's what this chapter is all about. So when you work with this material, don't just forget it after we move on this week. Um, use it for the rest of the quarter because all of this material will come up again. Um, in terms of you needing to use it. So I think the strategies are pretty straightforward. With naming, you are looking at um, specific observable features that uh, you're trying to describe. Uh, you draw attention um, to those things for some reason. It always goes back to your purpose. Uh, and of course, when you do this, you can, you can use senses. So is it something you see? Can you name something that you feel, something you smell, something you hear? Um, you can draw on those senses uh, as it's appropriate, of course. When it comes to detailing, that's when you kind of narrow in a bit. So naming can be a little more general, like in the example on page 557, the highlighted words are face, chin, fur, underside, eyes. It's not getting super, super specific. It's still kind of, you know, focused out into a broader uh, observation, whereas detailing is when you uh, get really specific and you really zoom in on one thing. So uh, for example, say that you are writing a narrative about a family experience and say that family experience in general spanned uh, three months. So you're writing about this three month um, period in a paper. So you're going to have to be pretty general in your description at some points, but perhaps there is one or two specific instances where you want to give details. And that's when you zoom in, you your focus changes from the general three month period to maybe uh, the course of an hour, that, that pinnacle hour that happened um, in that event. And that's when you would give really, really specific details. Um, so I, I hope that makes sense. That That's what you would be doing there. Uh, and of course you'd be using modifiers to do that, to, to give um, better description as to what's going on. You're, you're not just talking about something in general, you're getting really, really specific about it and you do that through modifiers. Uh, so they've got a lot of um, examples highlighted in the little passages they provide. So please, please, please look at those so that you can see what they're what the textbook is talking about in action. All right, so that is detailing. Um, comparing, that's when you use figurative language. We've talked about that um, previously, I believe, on a couple of, of um, instances. So. That's when you work with a metaphor or a simile. You're comparing something. Something is like this or something is this. So 
Remember, that's the difference between a metaphor and a simile. A metaphor is a direct comparison. A simile uses like and as. Um, so think about how you can use comparing effectively. Um, and of course, that means using figurative language, which we've talked about. Sensory description. I believe we've also talked about this. What senses can you really tap into to help describe um, what you're writing about? Is it something you see, something you hear, something you feel? Uh, like, is it something you feel with your hand or is it something you feel with your heart? Uh, think about all of those things and how you can describe them. Um, I don't think I really need to go into that too, too much. Um, they do break down the different senses and give you example words. Uh, that demonstrate those those senses so really take a look at those as well uh, and then dominant impression we've talked about as well that's just the general feeling that you want to provide in your paper uh, i talked about it in relation to narrative writing but it's also in another in any other form of writing when you write an argument how do you want to come off do you want to be combative do you want to be humble do you want to be assertive do you want to be compassionate you have to think about the kind of tone that you want to set in your description and in general in your paper so think of what dominant impression you want to use and then use descriptors uh, and descriptive language to help accomplish that so you have to think about what kind of effect you want to have on your reader do you want to pull on their um do you want to make them sad do you, and, and then agree with you through their sadness. Do you want to make them angry? Uh, what is it that you want to do? Dominant impression is very, very important. I think it's something that doesn't get taught very often. <clears throat> well, that's pretty much it. That's covered in the, the chapter. So like I said, there's not really much more I can add. I think the book does an excellent job of describing haha, these things. Uh, and it's got a ton of examples, so please review those. Make sure you understand these different strategies and then use them. And if you have to sit down and go, okay, I am going to name in this paragraph, then do it. I mean, that's totally fine. You just have to get used to using these strategies, and you can't do that unless you make the effort to do so. So don't think that, oh, I read it. It'll just naturally come out in my writing. I highly doubt it. So pick some strategies that you really want to work on and work on them until they become second nature to you. Okay, so if you have any questions about this stuff, let me know. Uh, it should be, again, pretty straightforward, but I'm more than happy to help if something isn't making sense or you don't know how to apply it to a certain paper. Um, so just keep me posted on how you're doing and, um, yeah, use these strategies to your advantage.